Hello, everybody. If you are watching this, it's probably Friday, February 1, 2019, and we are talking about momentum. So let's take some notes on this, and uh, we'll make some sense of what we saw before the deep freeze, and then we'll uh, talk about some new stuff and get a chance to get some practice with it, because I know how much you love those fun sheets. Okay, so what we remember from this is the simple formula for momentum is uh, rho, that little Greek letter rho, equals mass times velocity. That's it. And we talked about it as being inertia in motion. And really what that means is the more massive you are, the harder it is to stop. This is if something is moving. Or the faster it's going, if it has a higher velocity, it's harder to stop. Momentum is sort of a measure of how difficult something is to stop once it's moving. Um, one of the things we learned from the lab is that momentum is conserved in a collision. We saw that with the lab that we did on Tuesday. We might wonder, what does it mean to say that it's conserved in a collision? That means no is created or destroyed in an experience. We refer to these experiences. The first one, we had the two carts that were next to each other. Um, and they had that little bang of the spring, and then they ended up being two carts going in opposite directions, with one had a negative velocity, one had a positive velocity. Um, and we found out that here, the momentum of the system was zero before because the velocity was zero. Over here, you had a momentum that was some negative momentum, and on this side, you had some positive momentum, and the two of these things added up so that the total momentum was zero because these two were equal and opposite. Um, hopefully that makes sense. We did some practice with that, so I'm not going to go over that too much. Okay, so something else that we discussed in that lab for the end was impulse. And what we decided impulse is, it's a change in momentum. So if you want to change the momentum of an object, you have to apply an impulse, which is your change in rho. And the way you do that is by applying a force for some time. Both of these variables are important because you can just apply a force for a short time, and it doesn't really change the velocity of the object very much. Um, but if you apply the same force for a longer time, you get a greater acceleration, you get a greater change in velocity or momentum. So we say that impulse equals the force applied times the time that you apply it. All right, so if impulse equals force times time, and it also equals change in momentum, well, let's remind ourselves what momentum is. Remember, momentum is mass times velocity. So the change in momentum is going to be the change in mass times velocity. And it's not likely that the mass is going to change, so most likely a change in momentum is because you have a change in velocity. Hopefully that makes sense. So what we end up with, if we take this and pop it in over there, force times time equals mass times change in velocity. That is a pretty sweet equation that's pretty useful. Um, and we can find ways to make it a little bit more useful. Okay, so let's take this formula and let's really think about it. One more time we have. One more time, we have impulse equals change momentum. If you have this written down, don't worry about it. I'm just on a new page in momentum. So I equals delta rho, but we know that I is force times time, and delta um, rho, change momentum, is mass times change in velocity. So we can rearrange this. Look what happens if you pull this T out of this side and do the same over on this side. You have force equals mass times delta V over T. Hmm, what does that equal? You should recognize that from semester one. Please tell me that you learned something. That's right. F equals mass times acceleration. Does that ring a bell? Hopefully that should. That's Newton's second law. And if you remember that, it tells us that if you apply a force to a mass, you get an acceleration. The bigger the mass, the lower the acceleration. The bigger the force, the greater the acceleration. 
So we could do a lot of problems with this. Um, I just wanted to remind you of why that all works together that way. Um, we'll talk about the units as we go as we solve problems. So going back to the big one, we have Ft equals mass times V, delta V probably. Um, let's rearrange it. You get force equals M delta V over T, or you get T equals M delta V over F, or you get um, M equals F times T over delta V, or you get delta V delta V equals force times times over M. Those are four big equations. If you need to pause and write those guys down, do so, because we're going to use them to solve some problems. Okay, here's a version of the worksheet that you guys are going to get today. You should probably have it on your desks right now. If you don't, please stop and pass out the worksheet so you can see what's going on. All right, let's do it. So we've got two objects, A and B. So let's do everything we need for object A over here, everything for object B over there. So if identical velocities, so velocity of A equals, let's just call it V because they're the same. So velocity of V equals V. They're both the same, so we can call them the same thing. Object A has three times the mass of B. So the mass of A equals three times the mass of B. And the mass of B equals just the mass of B. Stop and think about it. So the momentum here would be three times the mass of B times velocity. Because remember, the velocities are the same. So the momentum of A is its mass, which is three times B's mass. The momentum of B would be its mass, which is just MB, times the velocity. There you go. Again, the same thing. So if you consider these two things, momentum of A looks almost exactly like the momentum of B, except it's multiplied by 3. So you can say that momentum of A equals 3 times the momentum of B. I want you to apply the same approach to solving number 2 here. Organizing, you've got object C, object D, get it as organized as you can. Talk it over with your people, see what you can come up with. It'd be nice if you can get an answer at the end that kind of looks something like that. All right, do that now. You can pause this if you want. I'll assume you paused it and come back to me in a minute. Okay, great. I'm glad you paused it. I'm glad you solved that problem. Let's take a look at number three, and then I'm going to set you free. Okay, while being thrown, a net force of 132 newtons. X on a baseball, which is a mass of 0 0.140 grams, sorry, kilograms, for a period of, a period, that's time, T equals 4.5 times 10 to the negative 2 seconds. This is, what is the magnitude? Magnitude means the size of the change in momentum, so delta P. Of the ball. Hmm. Do we have a formula that uses anything we have there? Delta P, change in momentum. What was it? it? Was force times time? That's right. Okay. So, all right. Equals 132 newtons times this. By the way, is the same as saying point zero zero four. Five seconds. Is that a long time or a short time? That's a super short time. I think I'm with it. This is how much time it is. So we're going to multiply those two things together at 0 0.045 seconds. Equals, when you multiply those things together, 5.94, and then the units are newtons times seconds. What in the world does that even mean in newtons? Well, I do remember that one newton equals one kilogram times a meter per second squared. What happens if I substitute that in there? 5.94, and instead of writing newton, I'm going to write kilogram times meter per second squared. And then I've got to multiply it by that second there. What do we end up when we do that? It ends up being 5.94 kilograms times meters per second. Hey, that should look familiar. Those are the units for momentum. Yay. So this momentum will change by that amount. 
All right, I'm going to leave you be, but I hope you continue to apply this method where you write down what you know from the problems, find an equation that works for it, and plug and chug and check your units. All right, you guys, good luck and stay warm, and I will see you Tuesday.